character. Church, say amen. amen. All right. Are there any grateful people in the house this morning? Y'all don't, don't, don't fool me now. I'm talking about really, really grateful. The kind that know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would we be? The Lord is an awesome God. Grateful. Uh, COVID-19 has killed over a million people. Oh, I'm talking about in the United States. And God has left us here. Uh, it, ought, it, it ought not be hard to find some grateful folk. It, it ought not be too hard to find. Uh, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, 270 miles away from here, from this very spot, a maniac walked into an elementary school and murdered innocent children. And that same day, I saw my two little boys coming up the driveway, coming up the driveway, and I just looked up towards heaven and said, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Happy anniversary, Dr. Lacey. I remember 30 years ago, Lacey used to say, things don't have to be as well as they are. And I think because we serve God, we slip into this entitlement kind of, well, we, we, we just expect things to be all right. But Job said, man born of a woman is of a few days. And those days are full, full of trouble. So you, you, you got to learn to be grateful. Gratefulness gives birth to another word. It's called gratitude. And then gratitude gives birth to a fancy word. It's called gratuity. You understand what I'm saying? It's fancy. It's fancy. It used to be just tip. Now it's gratuity. Y'all say it with me. Gratuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fancy word. When you go to Carabas and Graces and Papa Do's, at the end of the check, it's a gratuity. What that means is you ought to be, they want you to show the waiter or waitress that you're grateful for them waiting on you. Y'all get that? It, it, it used to be tip, now it's gratuity. Now, I was in a restaurant the other day, and they didn't suggest the gratuity. They assessed it. They took it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took it. And I began to wonder, what if God was like that? What, 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 what? I mean, I mean, he wake you up in the morning. He let you pass up accident after accident going to work. He let you get back home and put food on your table and get your appetite for the food that he just blessed you with. What if he just took the gratuity? That ain't what he do, though. This is what he do. Linda Sherrod, he says, as a matter of fact, he's the only person that before he asks you for a dime, he give you a dollar. Yeah. Isn't that right? He, 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 I mean, I know some folk that take it. FICA, whoever the word, who, who, whoever FICA is, they take it. A uh, 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 Blue Cross Blue Shield, take it. But God asks for the dime after he give you a dollar. I think that's a pretty good deal. And, 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 and if you do what he asked you to do, he said, I got some old windows in heaven. I let the window up, turn on the blessing of, turn on the faucet of blessing. And the, 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 the blessing will be so pure and so much, you'll run out of room to get it. That's what, that's what he said. I think that's a pretty good, good deal. St. Matthew, God is awesome. Uh, King James called him terrible. And, 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 and he'll never let you outgive him. In the old church, they, they said, keep on giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel, I've lived long enough. You can't beat it. Yeah. I've lived long enough to figure out this secret. He make a deal with you. Never before has he ever made a deal. He is sovereign. He can do what he want to do, but he made a deal with you. Can I be honest with you? And y'all don't, and y'all don't be, y'all don't, y'all don't judge me, please. I'm, I'm going to tell y'all a secret, and y'all don't judge me. 
I prayed for a billion dollars. Now y'all can see and act like y'all don't know what billion dollars I'm talking about. But, but, I, I, but, but I prayed for the billion dollars. I, I'm tell you, I prayed for it. And God immediately sent me a heavenly indictment. And, I, and I, I heard it just as clear as that. He said, Meg, you, you hellish enough. What in the world is you going to do with a billion dollars? You know I knew I wasn't going to get it, but I still bought a ticket. Because I said, if God make a mistake, I got, I got, I got a billion, y'all. And I promise y'all, I was going to invite all y'all to church and give everybody something. <laughs> that, that was my promise to y'all. But God is an awesome, awesome God anyway. And if you're faithful over the few pennies, a billion is not out of, out, of, out, of, out of the reach. You know what I'm saying? You just be faithful over what he, what he gives you. I'm glad that we are at church this morning. Amen. Again, happy anniversary, Dr. Lacey. 30 years is a long time to pastor us. I'm, I'm really surprised that all his hair not gray. Uh, my grandmother was the grandmother of 15 children. And I heard her, she used to say, it's just one of me. And it's 15 of y'all. I got to adjust my attitude to fit all 15 of y'all. Now, Lacey is just one of him. It's a whole lot of us. After 30 years, he got to adjust his attitude. And I got a bad attitude sometimes. Mich Michelle Jacobs, you got a bad attitude too. Trey, you might have, have one too. I see Doris back there, I know she got one. But Lacey got to adjust his attitude to fit all of our attitude. And after 30 years, I think he has mastered it. Yeah. Give him one big hand. And, and when, you, when you, you, you better be careful because when you're God's man, God will let him bury some of them folks that got a real bad attitude. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to be careful. I told y'all, I, I, I told y'all a couple years ago, you got to be careful how you handle angels. They stand at the doorpost of the sheep quarters. You got to be careful how you handle angels. I remember the angel in heaven after he whooped Lucifer out of out of the y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Gabriel, Gabriel whooped Lucifer out of heaven because because they was mistreating Gabriel. You cannot mistreat. An angel. You got to be careful, saints. Yes, Lastly, but not least, and I know I, I turn for historically tired and turn people off, but I'm gonna see if I can keep you keep you turned on. When God blesses you, He blesses you, and nobody else can do anything about it. He will allow. Linda, listen to me. He will allow your enemies to watch you get blessed, and all you got to do is do what He says. All you have to do is do what he suggests. And I guarantee you, the folk, and, 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 and I'm glad the Lord led me to this. A footstool is what he says he'll make your enemy. But I've noticed that if, if your closet is high enough and you can't reach some, something, you need a footstool. And you'll stand on a footstool. Yo, 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 the God that we say will allow you to stand on your enemy. And you can find out that you'll reach more things with a footstool that you can flat footed. There ought to be a witness in this house. I'm, 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 I'm through, y'all, because we got a great preacher, preacher coming. Uh, the verse is the hundred number of song, the fifth stanza, the fifth verse. For the Lord is good. Mercy and his truth to where? Can we go to God in prayer? Dear Master, here we are again. Filthy rags as we come before you. Not worthy of the day we serve. Lord, we come thanking you for last night's land down. You watched over us and kept us all night long. You dispatched angels and you kept us. And Lord, this morning we want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, old, old, old God, for being there for us. When things got dry and things, things got dark, you was, you was our light. And you kept us from day to day. This is another day's journey. And we are glad about it. Forgive us, dear master. We have sinned against thee and thee alone. We've gone 
places you told us not to go. We've done things you told us not to do. We ask him that you have mercy right now, Lord. Cast all our sins in the sea of forgetfulness, that they may never rise against us on the judgment of our rights. Now, Lord, bless the sick and sick all over the land and country. Somebody here needs you. Somebody here can't make this journey without you. Touch him right now, Lord, as only as you can. Bless the man of our that's going to bring this the bread of life. Heal him right now. Stand, stand before him, Father, and speak, speak for him. Now, Lord, I'm praying for a special prayer for our own Dr. Lacey. Touch him right now. Fold back the legions of his mind. Allow him to continue to lead us as we go on, to this, on this Christian journey. Lord, on this day, 3040, bless this entire church. Hold us in the hollow of thine own hand. Allow us to do what you see fit. Give us a church to go in mind. Let us love each other from that. I'm talking about that real love that burns from heart to heart and breast to breast. Lord, now and forever, when this life is over and time on earth is no more and the sands have collected our swords, we want to ask for forgiveness. And we, you ain't got to call us deacon and you ain't got to call us pastor and you ain't got to call us trustee. You can just say servant, well done. You've been good and faithful over a few things. Come on, how y'all make the rule over men. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, if you're able to stand, come on and stand and put your hands together. Come on. Anybody love to praise his name? Come on, put those hands together. Oh, I love to praise him. 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 You know, his holy. I love to praise him. Lift your voice. He's my will in the middle. I know he'll never, never let me down. He's been a jewel that I get. get. Hallelujah! 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 Is the highest, highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I love.
Y'all come on and clap those hands. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all come on, set the atmosphere for revival. Anybody need reviving? Hallelujah. God, move by your power. Move by your spirit. Have your way. Right now, God, move down every road. Touch every seat. Have your way, God. 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 Come on out there, just somebody high five somebody next to you and say, He's a mighty good God. He's a mighty good God. Come on and lift him up. It was early one morning, just before the break of day. Anybody know anything about the Holy Ghost?
Uplifted hand. Come on, if you're thankful for the Holy Ghost. Hey Amen. At this time, we're calling for our praise dance ministry. Today is a special day again, 30 years of right here at St. Matthew and 40 years of preaching. To God be the glory. Pastor Lacey, on behalf of the youth this morning, 30 years ago, Pastor Hart stood here and he said a sermon to you. He told you to stay on the wall. You're doing a great job. You've done an awesome job, a mighty job. And today the youth just have a little something they want to say to you to let you know. You heard a TikTok? But they ready to tick-tock with you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what the young people have for you. Hi, Pastor Lacey. It's Ty checking in. I just want to say...
Hi, Pastor Lacey. It's Ty checking in. I just want to say congratulations and happy anniversary to you. 40 years of teaching, 30 years of preaching, and I'm so thankful for you to be my pastor. Personally, you have changed my life. Personally, you have changed my family's life. Personally, you have changed the whole St. Matthew's life, and we are so grateful to have you as a pastor, and we wouldn't have it any other way. So again, I just want to say happy anniversary to you, and I love you. Hello, my name is AJ Mitchell, and I have been going to St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church for four months now. Um, I remember the first time me and my mother walked into the church, uh, we felt a presence of just welcoming and just enlightenment. Um, Dr. Lacey has spoken some things in the past that has really brought me and my mother out of certain things. Um, and I really hope that he knows that I am appreciative and I just love him with all the heart that I have that God gave me. And thank you. Hey, Pastor Lacey, we're just making this TikTok to say that we love and appreciate you. From me, Haley, and DJ. Bye. Lacey. Lacey. We. We. Love. Well. You. Yeah. Yay! Hi, Pastor Lacey! Happy 30th, 40th anniversary! From preaching, teaching, and learning! We love you, Michael Harley and Chloe! Faithful promises. Christ, about Jesus Christ. You rock. Hi, Pastor Lacey. Thank you for Children's Church. Thank you for everything. Thank you for baptizing me. I appreciate everything. And love you. Pastor Lacey, you rock. Pastor Lacey, what's going on, man? This is Thomas Church member. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I appreciate everything you do for us as far as youth-wise and even the adults. We ought to appreciate you and everything you do for me. Even out here in LA, I'm constantly praying and thinking about the church house. So, uh, miss you, man, and thank you for all you do. How you doing, Pastor? Happy anniversary. All right. Hey, Pastor Lacey, it's Demarcus and DeAndre. And we're just here to say thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for preaching and teaching for 40 and 30 years. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, you rock. Hey, Pastor Lacey, this is Max. You know that already, though. But this is me telling you how much I love and appreciate you, man. Thank you for everything you've done for me, my family, my church family, and anything I haven't seen, anything that's been behind closed doors, man. I really appreciate it. I love you. I love you, Papa. Yeah! I'm so glad. Dive it a bit of a better. Trouble don't last so well. Everybody come. Oh, yes, I. Love you, Pastor. Hi, Pastor Lacey. I would like to take this time to thank you for everything that you have done for me, my family, church family, and all of the youth. We appreciate that you support us through everything that we do, and you give us the opportunity to showcase our talents and many more. I would also like to congratulate you on your 4030 anniversary, and I pray that there are many more to come. Thank you. Let me stop this TikTok right now to say, Pastor Lacey, you rock. On behalf of the youth, we would like to say thank you for blessing us all these years and keeping us first. We love you. And now a presentation from Ministry in Motion. Pray that you listen to all the words. 
because I feel like at some point in everybody's life, you feel like this. Lord, I'm split in two. Part of me loves the world and the other loves you. So what do I do? I want to be saved, but I got to stay cool too. And no, I'm not a fool. I know eventually I'm going to have to choose. And really, I don't want to lose my ticket into heaven and a chance to be used by you. And if it's God that I'm after, I just can't serve two masters. And before something happens, I got to turn it all around because I know I can't just have my cake and eat. Cause it's real easy to stay on the fence and still do you And it'd be cool if we could love the Lord and still go do our thing But see it doesn't work like that You gotta be white or black See I've realized when it comes to sin you just don't compromise See, it's a matter of death and life Be weak and do wrong Or be strong and do right And I don't want to keep going to church Singing all about how much you're worth And then continue doing my dirt Living as if I didn't care if you're hurt Cause if it's God that I'm after I just can't serve two masters And before something happens I gotta turn it all around because I know I can't just have my cake and eat it too. Cause it's real easy to stay on the fence and still do you. It'd be cool if we could love the Lord and still go do our thing. But see, it doesn't work like that. You gotta be white or black. Amen. Come on, let's give them another round of applause for the youth department. Amen. Amen. Anybody really love Jesus? Come on, if you're able just to stand to your feet, come on and stand to your feet and lift your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. I really love you. Can anybody else tell them that? Come on and just fill the room. Now, I don't know what your relationship with him is, but I know what mine is. So I can only speak for myself. But whatever place you need to get in to meet, to get what the Lord has for you today, I dare you just to blot out everything that happened before you got here. Whatever, however your mind is racing, even right now, we bind that distraction in Jesus' name. And we just... Ask the Lord to just meet us right where we uplifted hands. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How, how I love you. I really love you. Lord, I praise you. Yes, I praise you. How I praise you. I really praise you. Just for who you are. And all. Just have me say, Lord, I love.
I really love you. Come on and say it again. Lord, I love you. Come on, you talking to him. Yes, I love you. How I love you. I really love you. Just for who you are. And no. You are everything. You are everything. I need. You are the great. Just tell him, say, you are everything. You are everything. I need him. You are the great. Lord, yes, I love you. Take me to seashore because I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Can anybody just tell him thank you? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I don't care what it's looking like. I encourage you to still lift your hands and tell him, thank you, thank you, Lord. I'm finna go up. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord. Can we say it one more time? Oh, thank you. Come on and just talk to him. Y'all sound real good. Oh, Lord, we come to tell you. Hey, oh, Lord, we sure do thank you. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. I just. about the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for you. You've been so good. So, so good. A mind regulator, a healer, a deliverer. So, who blood gets you out? I Last time 
everybody. Thank you. deserving of the favor but God I still tell you thank you Somebody else just needs to lift them. Somebody else needs that breakthrough. It's revival time. Don't leave here the same way that you came. Come on and thank him. Come on and thank him. keeping power I just want to say Give us some praise this morning. If God's been good to you, come on, help us praise him. We give him all the glory. We give you all the glory. Sing. Glory. Sing, saints. We worship you. Hallelujah belongs there. Hallelujah belongs there. Hallelujah belongs there. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah belongs there. If you know anything about God, hallelujah belongs there. God has been so good to every one of us. There are not everybody if the lord's been good to you let the redeem of the lord say so i want you to just give god some glory right in your circle i want you to just give god a little bit of praise right here in your circle you owe him a praise you know what you've been through you know how tough it's been somebody ought to say you owe god a praise you owe him a praise we give you all the glory and all the praise. 
Hallelujah to our King. We give the Lord Jesus Christ all of the praise. We give the Lord Jesus Christ all of the praise this morning. I'm talking about Jesus now. I'm talking about Jesus now. We owe the Lord Jesus Christ all of our praise. And we thank him for his goodness and for his kindness. Can y'all give uh, God a praise for our choir this morning? Come on, can you do, can you give God a praise for our choir this morning? Oh my God. I want to truly thank God for this choir. Every Sunday, they lift my spirit in some kind of way. I feel so much better when they sing to me. And uh, not everybody can sing to me, but when they sing, they lift my spirit, and I tell you, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so blessed. And then I want y'all to see something, St. Matthew. I want to thank uh, Leslie Little, our minister of music, for, for helping. Y'all don't know who he is. Wait, he's on the drums. Uh, as an overseer, I don't know what a drummer is, but the drummer's right here. And uh, give the drummer some this morning. A minister of music, he could have said, I don't belong there. I belong in the organ. And, and I don't belong there. I, I belong in front. But he, a minister of music, will go where he needs to go. And then you didn't even skip a beat. You didn't even know we missed the drummer, did you? But the drummer, we'll, we'll get to that later. But, but we, we thank God for his goodness and for his kindness. Let, Leslie Little, thank you for helping rebuild St. Matthew's Choir. Marlon Jackson, thank you for helping rebuild St. Matthew's Choir. All of the choir members, thank y'all for helping rebuild St. Matthew's Choir. Beverly Nance, you are my president. And thank you for helping rebuild St. Matthew's Choir. Rebuilding right before your eyes. That's what it's all about. Then I want to thank God for Medrick. I ain't gonna, I, I sure want to tease him. He keep on crossing the line, you know, between preacher, teacher, prophet. He just keep on crossing the line. But one thing I know is that he's a man of God. He loves God. Thank you, Medra. You can't get up here and just say anything and, and, and not make sense. He made sense. And my God, I could have ran when he's talking about taking things and God not taking. Man, I tell you, I, you, you can run with that. You can run, gratuity. He's... We owe God all the praise. And, 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 and he doesn't take it. He just wish we'd give it. Oh, my God. That's, as we say in the preacher's circle, that's preaching that. That's preaching that. that. That's portable. And so we thank God for it. That's another ministry. That's another form of rebuilding. Thank you for helping us rebuild this church. That's rebuilding. That's, that's what we're doing. We're not the St. Matthew three years ago because the pandemic took that from us. And so what we're doing now is rebuilding. And, and then I want to thank God for the youth that we saw today, TikTok. We, as, as, as they sung on the song, we moving on up to this side. We finally got a piece of the TikTok pie. Y I don't care what y'all say. We got, we got a little bit. We moving on up. Somebody shout, moving on up. Right here in the hood, trying to do some good. That's a part of the rebuilding. Let me say to everybody, we want our youth to be exposed. Not when, they, when you're saying they're doing something bad, but to expose them for the good that's in them and, and the blessings they are. That touched me with the TikTok. And bless me. And then 
the two dancers. They made that up. <laughs> Jay Bird and Sonai, they made that dance routine up. I saw them do it last week. That shows you how brilliant they are, Amen. how smart they are, how much they can give to the church. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get the preacher up, but I got to say, I got to say this. Um, um, we, I didn't think y'all heard what I said last week. I said that we was going to give a free trip to old McDonald's. I don't believe y'all heard me. Old McDonald's form for the kids. And I said that we was going to pay for the first 25. I don't think y'all heard me. So let me say it one more time. Uh, there is a free trip for the kids. Just incentive. Just a blessing. They're about to give, go back to school. It's, it's, it's a fun atmosphere. I took my grandson there, and he begs me every week, every day, when am I going to old McDonald's Farm? It's a blessing. And all I want to say to you is that I pray that you would not frown on the gifts that the church is trying to give to your kids. We're just doing, trying to, we're trying to create a holistic church. Can y'all say holistic? Holistic. Not, nobody should be left out. Um, we've got a new uh, 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 seniors leader um, because Sister Betty Jacobs is sick, is unable to leave, but we, we, it's, it's a graceful thing. And then I want to thank God. Sister Sharon Thomas is going to be leading that, so she's getting work so seniors can have something to do. I want to say one more thing. Sister Anita Jones, thank you for helping me rebuild uh, the church with the, with the, with the uh, ministry of our earth ushers. Y'all give her a hand clap, and the usher's been blessing us every week as well. I just want to acknowledge the people who've been helping rebuild the church. Um, I, want to, I want to give you your flowers and tell you how appreciative I am of what you are doing on behalf of the church. Every compliment is a blessing. God didn't have to bring it to pass. We got people like Chevette Labat. That's a gifted singer. She's national. All everybody. That's her, her, her husband is here. He's a pastor. We, we pray the Lord grant him the blessings of ministry, but he's been helping me. We want him because I know God has much for him to give. He's, he's too gifted. Uh, he has much to give, but every compliment is a blessing to the church. And let me say this. I'm not jealous of anybody. If I correct, I'm just trying to help. And I hope you all understand what I said one time in the sermon. Do not mistake correction from church hurt. I don't go after nobody. But if something is not right, I'm not going to tolerate it. And I'm going to say something about it. Amen. It's like if guys here don't have the sound. This see how this sounds? This sound, this, this sound is ministry. I like loud noise. Because Pastor Tuss is about to get up. Because if we around here straining, we don't have much voice. Some of us have colds. We have all kinds of stuff. But if I got to holler at y'all because I don't, can't hear myself, then I'm being disadvantaged. This stuff costs a lot of money. And so we want the best people in place. No preacher, this is, this is no preacher should have to beg for something. He has a, if, if it comes down to sound, that's the reason why we do sound checks. This is behind the scenes, so you know what's going on. A lot of times we look at things and say, well, what is he asking for? Sound good to me. It don't sound good to us because we can't hear. Singing preachers, hooping preachers, we need this. We got to hear ourselves because it's a professional and I'm going to say this and I'm done. I'm glad that I'm not a rookie poop preacher. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not one of these, one of these backyard guys who, who, who just pull up stuff and tell you the Holy Spirit told you something. I'm just glad. I, I sat in night special. I'm glad that I'm not one of these showmen who want to tell you you can name it, claim it, haul it, and y'all it. I'm not that either. I'm never going to lie to you and tell you the million dollars in your view because I don't know where it is, but when you get your million, give me 10%. Now, right, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Because that was a... 
there's a preacher in New York going through stuff now. We don't know what the issues are. I want to attack everything. It's funny, and I've been saying this for my 30 years. Pastors get no grace, but members get all the grace. And I heard Keon Henderson say this, that we are destroying our heroes, our black men. Because we don't give them chances. We don't give them the opportunity. To, I mean, not opportunity. Sometimes we make mistakes. But I give God the glory for his goodness and his kindness. I didn't mean to say all that. We've got guests here. And uh, this young man, you've never heard him before. But I pray that you give him a great St. Matthew welcome. His name is Pastor Charlie Tudson. Y'all say Charlie Tudson. You don't know him, but he's going to introduce himself. Uh, he's, he's a friend of mine. I've known him for years. And, 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 and I've never had the opportunity to bring him to St. Matthew. And he was put on my heart, and I wanted him to know that his only objective is to preach to our hearing because we need to hear a word from the Lord. He's a prolific preacher. He, 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 he's, not, he's not one of those rookie poop preachers either. He just preaches the word of God. He's very sound, and he's going to bless us today. He pastors two churches. I don't want to mess it up. He's going to introduce his two churches. And, uh, but I want y'all to welcome him. Can y'all stand and welcome and give him a big old welcome and say thank you for coming, Pastor Tustin, Charlie Tustin. Come on, Doc. Consecrate me by the power of thy grace divine. As my soul looks up with steadfast hope, my will is lost in thine. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank God for his goodness and for his grace. Yes, you may be seated. We thank God for his goodness and for his grace and for his unfailing guidance. My brothers and sisters, our God is a good God. Uh, I say this all the time because I certainly do mean it, that I'm, I'm grateful that God's goodness does not run on the same wavelengths with my goodness because there are some moments when I am no good but saints of God testify that God is good all the time. And all the time, God, he is good. You've done so already, but I pray that you would do this, amen, with me and for me. I would that you would publicly applaud and appreciate the angel of this house and the pastor of this church. Amen, my friend. What a preacher. What a preacher and pastor he is. Um, I'm going to say this real quick. Uh, I ended up this week in a, in a heated discussion about your pastor. Uh, discussion got heated because well, I was talking with a friend of mine and we were naming uh, great preachers in the city of Houston. And I brought up Dr. Leroy Lacey. He gonna tell me that Lacey not in Houston, he in Galena Park. <laughs> so I told him to, y'all pray with me. I told him, dude, don't, don't, don't play with me. Yeah. Houston is proud of Leroy Lacey. <laughs> Houston is proud of Dr. Leroy Lacey. When I mentioned great preachers in Houston. Don't let bringing up Galena Park to me. He's property of Houston. So we love him to life, man. We proud. I told him the way back, he sent me, give me a call last year. He sent me a letter early in this year. I packed the letter everywhere. I let everybody know. I got a letter from Dr. Lacey. 
I got a letter from Dr. Houston is proud of Dr. Lewis. Uh, so Matt, you have plenty to be proud of. And in that same breath, uh, we thank God for the queen with a capital Q, Sister Deborah Lacey. Thank you. Y'all give God glory for your first lady. And thank God for you. Uh, to the saints at St. Matthew, I, I, my first time here, you are some of the greatest saints on the planet. Y'all know how to praise God. You ain't got but one job when you're a saint, and that's worship your God. If that's the only thing on your resume, do it to the best of your ability. You ought to be known for what you do. You ought to be known for what you do. So when I get back to where I'm going, I'm going to make sure I tell them, hey, I was at church today where the saints know how to praise God. <laughs> know how to praise God. Uh, Dr. Lace mentioned that uh, God has entrusted me. I, I pastor two churches. Uh, let me just tell you this. Don't, don't, don't get tripped out over that. There's two churches, they in the same building. Okay. <laughs> they, they in the same, they in the same building. It, it ain't like he, he, no, I ain't got no commute. <laughs> no, I'm not even going cross town. I, I got an office for one and one and one down the hall and the, the same day in the same building. So. Uh, but by the grace of God, amen, I pastor the St. Mark Baptist Church, and uh, I've been pastoring the Canaan Land Baptist Church for uh, the last 24 years. Uh, I thank God for that assignment. Uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Ray Coleman, was called to pastor the Mount Zion Church in uh, Grand Rapids, Iowa. And uh, once he left, uh, their church didn't, didn't even hold a meeting didn't even open a pulpit. They just simply said, since you're already in this building, wake up a little earlier and pastor us at eight o'clock in the morning. So uh, uh, we had installation on, on last, well, I, since they said it to me, I just waited on God to, to say what they said. And uh, we did that. So yeah, he passed the two churches. He ain't doing nothing but having two services at a different time in. <laughs> he, he in the same, he in the same building. He in the, he in the same building. But I thank God. I thank God. Now, one thing I, I will say as we dive into our assignment on today, that one of the things that I thank God for, and that is that if you trust God, God has a way of keeping your feet on the ground where you won't think any more of yourself than you are to. I know I'm not the only one in here that has to be reminded. I, I need God for the next step. I can't do nothing without him. I need him to open the door. I need him to make the way. And without him, none of that is possible. So, uh, I, I give glory to him. Uh, there's a, there's a little text I, I want to talk about today. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make it to that second service. Amen. I got somebody handling that. I'm not going to make it to that second service. I pray that they don't vote me out. And the next time you see me, I ain't got but one church. <laughs> uh, I want to invite your intellect to summons your senses this morning to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter number 8. St. Mark, chapter 8. Verse 2 and verse 3. St. Mark chapter 8. Verse 2 and verse 3. I hope it's not terribly upsetting to you that I read from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Uh, St. Mark chapter 8. Verse 2, verse 3. If you're there, shout amen. 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 St. Mark chapter number 8, beginning at verse 2, King James Version of the Holy Bible reads like this, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, 
they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. Amen. Thus reads the word of God. I want to I wanna talk for a few minutes from this subject, Chronicles of Compassion. Chronicles of Compassion. Uh, I want to uh, initially make this statement uh, in the introduction part of, of this message that uh, I was going to try to pull this off, uh, but Dr. Lacey intimidated me when he said he was not one of those rookie pre preachers. <laughs> I've known that for a long time, but I thought maybe since it was my first time on campus, I would probably get away with being able to pull something like that. Because what I really wanted to do today was just jump on the tail end of this text and shout my way through this, not having said anything about the text that I read to you. <laughs> While it is a part of this, this setting, I want to at least take a moment and give God glory for the last part that says many of them have come from afar. And one of the things we ought to be willing to praise God for while we're celebrating is that God has brought many of us from afar he's brought us from great distances through some things that only god could have brought us through if if i wasn't a preacher doc i'd really hang out right there and say hadn't he brought you from a long way and from the way that he has brought you you ought to be telling god thank you that from a great distance, from a long way, from through some things that other people didn't think you would make it through, God has already brought us. One of the shouts that I do have for today is this, that when I didn't think I would make it, when I had no idea how I would get through, when it was staring me in the face and it shook me in my boots, the thing that stood in my face is now in my rearview mirror. If I had a moment, I'd shout with you and tell you that God has brought us from a long way. Uh, I thank him. And I've often wondered, Doc, I often wondered, especially as I look around at St. Matt this morning. Now, let me just drop this in real quick for free because while I'm here today in admiration, I'm also here with a little dose of hateration. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a mild dose. It's just a mild dose of hateration because let me be clear about this. It's obvious God has been good to St. Matthew. It's obvious God has been. If I was dressing it up preacher style, I'll let you know that God's fingers have favored you. And you ought not be ashamed to hide the fact that I have what I have because God's been good to me. There was nothing keen about me, nothing smart about me, nothing odd about me. The reason I have what I have is because God has been good to me. Looking at this text, Jesus obviously points out right from the jump, I have compassion. He, he says, I have compassion on this multitude. He specifically mentions this term, compassion, says that I'm going to do for them what they cannot do for themselves because I have what they need even though they are afraid to ask me for it. 
that God will fulfill a need in your life even though you haven't asked him for it because he's that kind of God. He'll do what you won't ask. So if he'll do what you won't ask, what do you think he'll do if you decide to ask him? He has this term, compassion. He says, I'm going to give to you what it is you are lacking because when you lack, you'll see my love. My love shows up when you have a lack. My brothers and sisters, I don't know if you know God like that or not, but I've seen God do things for me when I was at my lowest. And it's funny that when we come to church today, nobody wants anybody to know that they experience life lows. We have to carry ourselves in high capacity because somebody might be ashamed to say that I had a rough night last night, but here I am as a witness today that weeping may endure for a night, but joy still comes in the morning. He has compassion on this multitude. Listen at what he says. I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me for three days and they have nothing to eat. If I send them away fasting to their own houses, they may faint by the wayside because they have come from a long way. They have come from great distances. And it, I noticed this, that this term for compassion, when he says, I have compassion, he's saying that he is the one that's the superior. But the superior has this thing in his heart for the inferior. The inferior basically has no grounds to contact the superior. But the superior does not stand in separation and stand offishness away from the inferior, saying that you don't deserve what I have because you are beneath me. Listen at what happens. The superior is moved by the position of the inferior. That we have a God that could stand off in all of his majesty, in all of his splendor, in all of his glory. He could act funny with us. But I wish I had a witness that will testify. I'm here today not because God stood off from me, but even in my inferior position, he found a way to get to me. So and so... And, and so he says, I have compassion on this multitude. I, I have compassion on this multitude. Now, I, I asked him on my way over here. I said, Jesus, I need you to help me. I'm going to St. Matt. It's my first visit on the campus, and I need you to help me. Why did you have compassion on this multitude? One of the things that people will try to do to you is they'll try to make you think it's nothing about you that gets God's attention. But I need you to know if he made you in his image, if he made you after his likeness, if he's taken the time to invest his breath of life into your nostrils, if he takes the time to hold your hand and guide your footsteps and fight your battles and make your enemies leave you alone, I need you to know there is something about you that gets God's attention. And when you get God's attention, God will do for you what nobody else can do. And yes, you got a right to feel good about yourself because with a God like that, who wouldn't feel good serving a God like that? He says, I have compassion on them. So I text him to Jesus. I need to know it's something about them. It's, is it something about them that made you have compassion on them? Jesus said, I need you to know it's a lot about them. 
It's so much about them that I want you to take notes and make sure you tell St. Matt that when I look at Pastor Lacey and when I look at them, it's something about them that gets my compassion. I want them to know that every time that they gather week after week, you're not gathering in vain. It's something about you that when you get together, God still shows up. So, 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 so he says, uh, there's some things about them. I want you to know there's some things about them, something about this particular crowd that got my attention and made me do for them what they couldn't do for, their se for themselves. I did it because I have compassion. They couldn't do it for themselves, but even though they were inferior to me, I didn't let my superiority keep me from raining down on them because it's still something special about them. I said, Jesus, would you tell me what's special about them? He says, please read the text. If you read the text, the first thing I'll tell you that's special about them is it's their loyalty to the Savior. He says, when you read it, I have compassion on them because they have been with me. This term that he uses in Greek for with indicates that it carries the same connotations that we use for the word marriage in English. He says they have been with me. They have been married to me. Now, anybody in here that's married, if you've been married for the length of at least one month, you know that marriage has certain challenges that will suffer sometimes confront you and make you wonder if you ought to stay in it. Marriage has a way of bringing confrontation that will make you wonder if I made the right decision. I wish I had somebody to help me through this. Marriage has a way of bringing certain challenges that make you wonder, do I need to unpack my bag? Or do I need to keep Tyrone on speed dial? Do I need to wait it out? Or is this gonna ever get better? Am I in the right place? Did I make the right choice? Am I with the right person? Marriage has a way of confronting you uh, and challenging you uh, and making you wonder did I make the right decision Jesus says about these people that they had other options and they had other opportunities but with other options and other opportunities they married me and they stayed married to me for the length of three days I just need you to grab this, uh, that it's your loyalty to the Savior. Somebody in here can testify right now. I had other options, but I stayed with the Lord. I, I had other opportunities, but I stayed with the Lord. I wonder if there's a real witness that'll testify. Yes, I had some things uh, to challenge me, to confront me, to confuse me, and, but with other opportunities, to do other things I'm glad I stayed with the Lord they they were with him they were they were tied to him they 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 were they were connected to him no, 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 this is not my marriage counseling course, but let me just tell you that, that marriage, when you're in it, there are only really three biblical grounds for divorce. Uh, so I don't think you got the right to leave just because you got mad. You better learn how to wait it out. Uh, uh, the, the three grounds for, for, for divorce are, are adultery, abandonment and abuse if you're being abused get out amen if you're being adultered if there's no other way that we can fix this get out and if you get abandoned by the grace of God by all means 
get out. Uh, but glory be to God, none of these factors were present. These people were tied to Jesus. They did not abandon him. They did not pick another God on him, and they did not abuse him. They stayed connected with him, and for their loyalty, he says, I have compassion. Yes, he has he has compassion on them because of their loyalty to the Savior. I said, Jesus, I do thank you. I do thank you for that point. He said, wait a minute. Don't, don't close the text. I need you to know that there's another reason I am compassionate to them. I am not only compassionate to them because of their loyalty to the Savior. I am compassionate to them because of the length of their service. They have been with me for three days. Now, pardon me, because I text right back, Jesus. Three days don't sound like it's got enough length in it for you to invest this kind of compassion just because of that length of service. I said, Jesus, you know, I, I, I live in Houston. I, I work in Houston. You have to at least be on a job 90 days before you get some benefits. Three days don't seem like it's enough time I said, and if you'll allow me to, to, to back up to wording that you just used, you're saying that yo, you made the decision for you and this multitude to be married and y'all ain't been together but three days. Three days is not long enough to make a lifetime decision. Now, Jesus, what's up? with these three days and Jesus says you know I figured you would have a problem with it yeah I figured you would have an issue with it because three days is not long enough for you but I did not say they had been with you for the last three days they been with me and three days might not mean much to you but how many of you can testify three days mean something to him Jesus needs to know if you can handle it for three days he just needs to know can you make it through the weekend he just needs to know can you hold on for three days I said, Jesus, why was three days important to you? He said, you act like you don't know my story. I got caught up one Friday. They held me Friday morning. They held me Friday afternoon. They held me Saturday all day. They kept me Saturday all night. But I needed to know on the third day, the crowd that was with me Friday, would they still be there when I got up Sunday morning? And because they could hang for three days, Jesus says, I'll give them my compassion because of the length of their service. Uh, uh, I got to go. I got to go. I, I got to go. Um, um, the text is still open. So after Jesus gets me straight, about the length of their service that they've spent three days with him and not with me. And it mattered to him even if it did matter to me. It was long enough for him even if it wasn't long enough for me. Jesus says, but before you hang up, I have at least one more reason 
why I give them my compassion. I give them my compassion because of their loyalty to the Savior. I give them my compassion because of the length of their service. But I also give them my compassion because of the lack of their supplies. They have been with me for three days. And they have had nothing to eat. They didn't have a little bit. They didn't have anything bite-sized. For the last three days, they have been with me and they have had nothing to eat. I know that this season of ministry for us is difficult to get a shout on this. Because today we come to worship trying to show everybody everything we got. We wear it all, drive it all, we live in it all, and, and we got to show everybody, if don't nobody else know, when I come to worship, they going to know I got it going on. But I need you to, I need you to co-sign with this, with, with me on this, because this is the season of my life where I'm at right now. I have learned to thank God not for all of the things I do have. I got to tell God, thank you for the moments when I didn't have it. I know, I know, they don't want to talk like that in church, but is there a saint that can witness with me? Don't leave me by myself. Is there a saint that remembers when you didn't have it? Yes, I got it right now, but I can remember when I didn't have it. Now, now here is my shout for the day, and I got to get ready to go. Here's my shout for the day. You know when I didn't have it, I found out God was better when I didn't have it. Somebody playing with me this morning. I, I got to get ready to go. You don't know God is bread till you get hungry. You don't know God is a provider till you get broke. You don't know God is a shelter till you're about to get evicted. You don't know God is a doctor till you get sick. Is there a witness that can testify? I remember when I didn't have it. But when I didn't have it, it didn't stop God from being good to me. In worship, Dr. Lacey, we got so many people that got it. They act like they can't identify with people who don't have it. But be real, it wasn't that many days ago when you didn't have it. And God blessed you when you didn't have it so that now that you got it, you ought to remember he was a good God when I lacked supplies. I said, Jesus, I sure thank you. I sure thank you for setting me straight. I thank you for setting me straight. That you had compassion on this multitude because of their loyalty to the Savior. You had compassion on this multitude because of the length of their service. And you had compassion on this multitude because of the lack of their supplies. I said, Jesus, I give you glory. You are so good. You bless us when we don't deserve it. And Jesus says, before you, before you hang up, I want you to tell them that I got another reason that I, I had compassion. Jesus says, not only did I have compassion because of their loyalty to the Savior, 
Not only did I have compassion because of the length of their service, not only did I have compassion because of the lack of their supplies, but I also had compassion because of the level of their sacrifice. He says, if I send them away fasting, if I send them away in their season of sacrifice, I don't want to send them away with nothing. I don't want to send them away empty. Because if they go back to where they came from, they won't make it there with the testimony. They have heard a lot over the last three days, but they haven't eaten anything. They have, watch this, they have sacrificed eating in order to hear a word from the Lord. They have decided that one day, two days, three days, is more than enough for them to not eat because the word that they had was enough for them to feast on. They have sacrificed within their physical realm in order to receive spiritually and here's what Jesus says, I'm not going to challenge them physically by making them run on only spiritual fumes. I want to make sure that physically they can make it back to where they're going because they have made a huge sacrifice to be where I am. Making this hard because you act that's church people. That ain't y'all. That that's not listen, that's not y'all. That's not y'all. I'm gonna tell you this church. I got I got two churches. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. You can tell them I told you this. The two churches that I pastor, I always have this particular struggle because people in church know everything except when to shout. They know everything except when the shop. So, so, Dr. Lacey, this is where I'm at with the two churches. What I have to do is I have to teach them shouting points. I had to, I had to teach them shouting points. So, so, a lot of my messages, if y'all catch it online or something like that, you hear it going something like this. That Jesus has promised that for your sacrifice, you will not go back to where you were empty. And amen go right there. Jesus has made a vow that you are going to make it back to where you came from with the testimony that you gained over the last three days. He's going to make you strong enough. He's going to give you stuff enough. He's going to bless you with what you don't have so that when you get back to where you came from, you're going to be able to tell everybody, when I was empty, he filled me up. And amen. Now, I got to ask you, I'm getting up out of here. Has God ever done that for you? Has God ever opened a door? Has God ever made a way? Has God ever fought a battle? Has God ever answered a prayer? Has God ever rained down a blessing? Has God ever done what you never expected God to do? If God did it and you made it back the way you came from with the testimony of what God has done, amen, glory, hallelujah, Praise the Lord goes right there.
God. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. God has been good to us by giving us compassion based upon your loyalty to the Savior, based upon the length of your service, based upon the lack of your supplies. Look at somebody, tell somebody, tell them, I ain't always have it. I ain't, I ain't always have it. I ain't always have it. But just because it was my season of sacrifice, God didn't send me back where I came from empty. Now, now I got to go. I got to go. I'm out of air. I'm out of voice. I'm almost out of energy. But there are at least three questions left on the table that I have to ask you. I, I, I'm not going to use my hooping voice. I'm just going to ask the questions and get in my seat. Question number one is, won't he do it? Question number two is, have you tried him? And the last question is, ain't he all right? I gotta, I gotta quit, I gotta quit, I gotta quit. I gotta quit, but won't he do it? Have you tried him? Is he all right? Won't he open doors? Won't he make ways? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he rain down blessings? Won't he do it? Have you tried him? Is he all right? Now nah, I'm done. I promise I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of here. But if you tried him and you know he's all right, why don't you serve your neighbor an SOS? Tell you that just says, excuse me, this is my SOS. The SOS just is simply an acronym for scoot over some. Because when I think about the battles he's fought, when I think about the ways he's made, when I think about the blessings he's given, when I think about how he raised me, how he blessed me, I need you to scoot over some. I got to praise his name. Won't he do it? Have you tried him? Is he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. He's all right. belongs there. Wow. What a word this morning. Come on, St. Matthew. Give the Lord a praise for the word of God this morning. Won't he do it? <laughs> yes, sir. What a word this morning. My, my, my. That was Charlie Tutson, Pastor Charlie Tutson. Let me say it again. That was Pastor Charlie Tutson. What a blessing this morning. Pastor, thank you so much. Did what I knew you would do, and that is preach a word to us in such a profound way. What y'all think, St. Matthew? He's a preacher. I owe him an apology. I owe you an apology this morning. And this, this, I'm sorry it took me so long to get you here. That's my apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but man, thank you so much. What a, what a look at that text. But prior to getting to the, to the, what we look at is a good part. He. 
he dealt with that and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't get my mind off how the Lord has had compassion on me and um, I think all of us can testify the Lord has been compassionate hasn't he in his superiority he didn't let my inferiority deny me of mercy and grace and so I'm so grateful pastor thank you so much for your word today I know I know I've been blessed and I know our church has been blessed heads bowed eyes closed if you would we we preach to affect change and that was a life-changing message it really was it was a life-changing message just a glimpse of the goodness of God if you can't apprehend who he is and how loving he is even now Pastor Tussin gave us a glimpse of the goodness of God if you're here in this church and and, and I hope everybody is praying because we want to get to this point of trusting God and believing God for everything if you came to the church upon your arrival you were not saved and when I say that you you have not personally or uh, privately accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior that's no wrong in you not not knowing Jesus in the term but if you if you if we introduce to him to you and say to you that you confess with your mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved it's your faith saves you your faith in Jesus Christ if you trust him you believe in the day that he died and gave his life as a sacrifice for us you believe that he hung on Calvary's cross and that he stayed in the grave for three days and rose on the third day the Word of God says you you shall be saved if you believe that and you want to be saved this morning raise your hand raise your hand if you believe that you believe what Jesus did at Calvary if you believe that raise your hand and, and mind you Jesus did that for you as he did it for me he died for our sins so if you're not saved and you want to be saved this morning raise your hand if you would secondly if you are saved but you 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 turned away from God or turn your back on God the term you are backslider you walked away from God walked away from the church walked away from a covenant walked away from fellowship but yet God compelled you to come this morning you know how you were raised you know how good God has been to you and the Lord brought you here not by chance but he brought you here because of his providence you are here for a reason if you need to come back to church get back in church renew a relationship with the Savior raise your hand raise your hand renew a relationship with the Savior thirdly if you are here today and you you are saved but you don't have a church you just just been traveling from place to place maybe you're just not un you're uncertain about the church I pray that that you can get past that St. Matthew is a good church not because we are a perfect church but because we love Jesus Christ Amen. but then that's Canaan and then that's St. Mark Pastor Charlie Tusson he and I won't fight over church we want everybody to be saved doesn't matter to us what church you belong to we just want you to get in church if you need a church today you want to be involved in the church you want a pastor you want a covering raise your hand Lord how I thank you for the word thank you for the giving the invitation somebody is still indecisive but we give you all the glory for your word has gone forth in Jesus name amen
compassion on them. Let's thank God for the preacher, Pastor Charlie Tutson. Let's give it up for him one more time. Amen. It is offering time, saints. It is offering time. We are grateful to give back to the Lord what he has given to us. It is a blessing. Everything we have is a gift. We are stewards over everything. And let me thank God for all of those who continue to give faithfully those who have not started that trend, let me ask that you reevaluate your giving, give towards the church because you know it's right and know that the Lord will bless you as a result of it. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. There's one for giving. Let me ask that you would uh, put our giving methods on. There it is. Thank you so much. There are several ways to give. Uh, we have those things available for you. Ushers are coming around. If you need to, an envelope, just raise your hand. You can give online, stmatthewbc.org uh, on our website, church website. You can give to St. Matthew BC, dollar sign, St. Matthew BC, cash app. You can give to Givelify, and you can give personally. Amen. So we pray that all of us are ready to give. We oh, Sister Lacey, come on, I'm sorry. These are the birthdays. Birthday, Willie Mae Lacey. Sister Willie Midget Lacey. Come on, come on, the mama get it for you. Oh, you don't have, oh, oh, no, we'll get it to you. All right. Hey, uh, happy birthday, mama. And they win every year. Uh, the anniversary is Kenan and Ethel Murphy. All right. All right, Saints, we're grateful uh, for the birthdays and for the anniversaries. God is good all the time. We are grateful. And then I want to thank God for the children's church. Give them a hand clap. And for those who are ministering with the children, <laughs> I saw some big old hands. And if we can get all of them to start going to children's church, we good. We, we're on our way somewhere. God is good. That's what it's all about. Thank y'all so much. Sister Williams. All right. Huh? Presentations. All right, we'll do that. Let me ask that. Let me pray for the, for the gifts, and then we'll get the presentation. Lord, thank you for what you've done and what our eyes see today. Thank you for people who are willing to work, who have a mind to work. We still have evidence of youth in our church. We have more. We ask, God, that others will come forth and get, get back involved. We ask that you would do that in the name of Jesus. Now, God, bless the gifts we're about to receive. Pray, God, that everything is done decently and in order. And we honor you with the first fruits of our blessings. In Jesus' name and for our sake, I pray. Amen. The ushers are now passing the baskets. As they are passing the baskets, we will have that presentation. And the kingdom builders, please come up and stand with me this morning as we make this presentation. All members of the kingdom builders, the youth, and only fitting that I ask the co-chair to stand with us. The chair, the, the chair. That would be you. 
That would be you, Medry. Uh, Pastor Lacey, we're still here. And we are in your corner. We love you dearly. These young people are standing here. And to the parents, thank you for all of you that made the sacrifice as I called upon you and asked you. But we want you to know that we love you. And we really do appreciate everything that you've done for these young people. Uh, they started out, and one of them is missing, and that's Derek. Christopher, I mean, Christopher is 30-ish now, but you Christianed him, baptized him, and uh, these people are here to stand with me today to make a presentation to you to let you know how much we love you, and we're still following right alongside you. Amen. I hope that you are still giving if the baskets are coming forth. Thank all our young people. That is such a blessing. Come on now, give them a hand clap. We thank God for them. And we thank God for those who are working with them. It is a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. And so I just want to continue to just do that on behalf of our young people. We are so grateful for them. It's a blessing. It is a blessing. All right. Um, Y'all can keep playing a little music. I ain't even going to get some, but I'm just, I'm just, I, I ain't, we're just grateful. Amen. Everybody had a, um, everybody had an opportunity to give. right I'm just gonna bless it Lord I thank you for what you've done thank you for the young people tonight today and thank you for the service today it's been a wonderful worship experience Lord that we got a chance to worship you in spirit and in truth bless the gifts that we have received all of the tithes all of the offerings all of the blessings we magnify you and we give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Come on, Pastor Charlie. Pastor Charlie Tussin is going to give us our benediction and he's going to pray for the sick of our church. Sister Emily McBride, I just I talked to her this morning. She's doing better. We want to ask God to continue to bless her. She's in the hospital in Galveston, Texas. Remember Sister Elizabeth Hancock, uh, she's been battling. We want to pray for her, that God will give strength. Continue to pray for Sister Demetra Walker, her son Royce, uh, just to name a few, but we've got over 70 names of people we need to pray for. But these in particular, I wanted to just lift them up before God. And all of us who need prayer, just lift your hands. We're going to pray for you. Pastor Tussin going to pray for us and give our benediction. Come on, give it up for them one more time. with us if you would oh God our father how we thank you for being the God that knows us better than we know ourselves thank you for being the God that sits high and looks low and you oversee every one of our affairs I call on you now in the name of Jesus for those who are ill or ailing, afflicted, dealing with some manner of sickness and disease. We come to you because you are a healer. You are a doctor. You are a surgeon. And you can medically fix in us from heaven what has gone wrong in this earth. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance for each and every one of your afflicted children. I pray for the St. Matthew's family, both individually and collectively. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Send that virtue 
of healing to be able to break every yoke of sickness and disease. Pray that you would bring and restore health and wholeness as only you can. For being the God that is our healer, for being the God that is our deliverer, for being the God that makes ways out of no way, for victory and healing in advance, we say thank you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. All right, listen, listen, listen. Amen. God bless you. We are ready to go. Come on and bless uh, Pastor Tussin and give him a hand clap. I mean, give him a handshake. Let him know how you bless him. Amen. Y'all have a good day. Have a good evening. Amen. <laughs>